if the resources sector goes down, this whole shooting match is over. They're buying fewer sausage rolls and chalk milks for brekkie and fewer pints of Swanee D after work. The less tax they pay, the more we have to. The resources industry is getting nervous about COVID. The Premier has announced no jab, no work rules for people on resources projects. It's draconian, but if the resources sector goes down, this whole shooting match is over. Here's a fact you can use if you happen to be at the world's most boring PNC quiz night. It takes about 38 hours for a molecule of natural gas to travel 1,350 kilometres from the gas fields off the coast of the Pilbara to Perth. The gas travels around 10 metres a second down the Dampier to Perth gas pipeline and into our custom-fitted Melee ovens. So what happens if we have to shut down the facilities that feed that pipeline? Don't worry about the $27 billion in LNG sales we put at risk by closing them down. We can't make a cup of tea. We can't have hot showers. We actually can't even turn the lights on because Synergy uses that gas to fire some of its power stations. OK, so we need to keep oil and gas running. What about mining? Yeah, we could close that. Shut down iron ore, gold, nickel, bauxite and alumina. That's a lot of money to lose, but let's say we put them on care and maintenance. Might require, say, 10% of the workforce to stay on. The WA government says there are this many people employed by resources companies in this state. So that's this many people out of work. A lot of those people are the ones who are renovating their homes. So tradies suddenly aren't as busy anymore. They're buying fewer sausage rolls and chalk milks for brekkie and fewer pints of Swanee D after work, which means small business starts hurting. That's all bad, but it will take a while to wash through the economy. It won't take a while for the WA government to fill the pinch. The royalties those companies pay totaled $12.1 billion last year. Every month, the WA government gets its cheque for... One billion! It's cash in the bank, and it pays for pretty much everything. Not like rich listers who use offshore tax havens. Am I the only one that doesn't have one of these things? The so-called Pandora Papers have exposed the way rich people often have money parked in companies that are registered in places like the Caymans and British Virgin Islands. The International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, that's a bunch of reporters smarter than me, has trawled through 11.9 million leaked files involving a lot of famous people. Why would anyone have a Cayman Island bank account? Everyone thinks it's to avoid tax. Sometimes, but the whole thing's a bit overblown. Everyone thinks you set up a company in Panama and send your company profits there and you pay zero tax. If you're an Australian citizen and you tell the ATO everything you're legally required to, having a Cayman Islands account or a business registered in Panama won't dramatically reduce your tax bill. Australian tax rates apply. It's only when you don't tell your local tax man about those overseas accounts and businesses that you can shirk your tax. Most people who don't tell their government about their offshore interests aren't doing it because they're worried about the IRS or the ATO. They're doing it because they're worried about the Australian Federal Police or the CIA. So the real tax dodgers aren't people? They're corporations, like Facebook, American company, operations all around the world. But as far as international tax law went for a long time, it was Irish. In 2010, it set up a holding company in Ireland and Facebook USA sold that subsidiary all its intellectual property. It said the move was appropriate at the time given it was in a growth phase and it wasn't publicly listed. I'm sorry, I'm allergic to bullshit. The IRS reckons the Dublin Dodge saved Facebook $9 billion in tax because Irish tax rates are lower than those in America. Canva, the Melanie Perkins graphic design powerhouse. It was born in WA. She's from Duncraig. Its main office is in Sydney. Its official corporate home, the US state of Delaware. A lot of companies base themselves there. They say it's because Delaware is home to the world's best run system of corporate law. It's also because they don't pay much tax there. It's weird. You know so much about Delaware. BHP makes three quarters of its profit from mining iron ore in the Pilbara. We just talked about that. Its global HQ is in Melbourne, but it uses a trading hub in low-tax Singapore to get around paying tax to the Australian government and royalties to WA. It said it needed a Singapore desk to be closer to its customers. 
BHP was caught selling coal on the cheap to a subsidiary in Singapore, which then sold it at a much higher price to customers in China. The big Australian had to pay $87 million back to the ATO. You're getting upset. I am, because I hate paying tax. You hate paying tax. And the less tax they pay, the more we have to. That $87 million wasn't a one-off. A couple of years before that, BHP settled a $529 million transfer pricing claim with the ATO. And in 2019, it repaid the WA government $250 million after it used Singapore to shortchange us out of royalty payments. Chevron's Australian's operations basically come down to two giant LNG plants, both in the northwest of WA. Busted for getting its US parent to lend the local arm $2.5 billion and charge it 9% interest. Interest rates are tax deductible. The higher the interest, the bigger the deduction. Chevron International didn't care because the money was going from one pocket to another. The ATO did care because the Australian entity was claiming a massive tax deduction on the cost of servicing the debt to itself. Chevron had to pay back $866 million, which is good, because it means the Australian government can afford to give oil and gas workers the jab. And you and I can have a nice cup of tea while we worry about our tax bill. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.